Hello everyone and welcome to this episode in how to create a climbing ledge mechanic in your UE4 game. This was a video that was voted for by my patrons and YouTube members so thank you so much for your continued support and for voting for this video series. And it is going to be a series, there are going to be a number of videos that go in towards this. It won't be as long as my regular series do but be a couple at least. In this episode, we're going to get started with our uh, detection of our ledges and the way that's going to work is through a variety of traces and we're going to get a lot of data from those as well. But before we get started, I want you to import the animation that I've included for you. If you go into the description below, you can find the link to the file and download it for yourself. Once you download it, you want to import it into your game, making sure you choose the UE4 mannequin as its skeleton. I've already retargeted it for you and already fixed its root so it has root motion already assigned to it. And once you've got it in there, it should look something like this. Okay, uh, so pretty basic and very much what we need. And FYI, this came from Mixamo, but it had to be fixed and, and corrected to work for our purposes. So I've already done that hard work for you, you'd so you don't have to. And you can use this animation for whatever you like in the future. Okay, so to get started, we want to first of all turn that into a montage. So right click on your animation, go to create at the top and choose create and in montage. And I'm going to hit enter and leave it as that. Next, I'm going to go into my third person blueprint. So as I said, we need to create some detection for the ledges. So it's going to be a dynamic, meaning that we aren't, we aren't going to say this ledge is climbable, this ledge is climbable, this ledge is climbable. We're going to say, hey, if you detect there's a ledge there, by all means, please climb it. And we're going to do two types of traces. We're going to do something called a wall trace and then a ledge trace. The wall traces can go forwards from the player character and the ledge traces can come down towards the player character. And a combination of those two will give us exactly what we need to determine whether or not we can climb and hang from a ledge. So there can be two functions that we're going to make on here. So I'm going to create a new function in my functions list on the left. And I'm going to call this one forward trace. And then we're going to call the other one height trace. And both of these are going to be uh, sphere traces. So they get a nice wide angle on the uh, the trace itself. So I'm going to go from height trace first, uh, forward trace first of all. And drag from there and do a sphere trace by channel. And the starting position for this is going to be from the player character. So we have to get the actor's location. Like so. And we're going to plug that into the start there. Now it all depends on how far away you want to be able to detect a wall. So I'm just going to drag out a get forward and I want to choose get actor forward vector to get the rotation of our character which and the direction they're facing. With that direction we can multiply it by length so times it by float and we'll type in a value here. So I'm going to put in 150 for now and this is a value you can tweak and change later on as you see fit. We then add this offset here to the starting position. So add to that vector there, connecting them both up. The resulting pin will be plugged into end. Now for a sphere trace, you need you do need to put in a radius value. And the radius value is just basically how wide of a trace it's going to be. So I'm going to put in a value of 10 for now. Uh, again, can be tweaked later. It's not, not the end of the world if it can't. And for testing purposes, I'm going to change the draw debug type to for one frame. Hit compile and let's close that. Now I want to be able to see this in the world. So I want to, sorry, not close it. We want to go to the event graph of it uh, and see it via the tick. So add a tick event, then drag out your forward trace function and plug that into the tick. Hit compile and we should be able to see a sphere trace coming out from the player character, like so. So what we're going to do now is do a height trace coming down from the player character. And you can see the trace being detected there when it hits a wall. So we're going to do one that comes down towards the player character as well. So for that, let's return back to our player character's blueprint and into the height trace function. 
So similar to the four trace, this is going to be a sphere trace. Right channel. And the starting position for this is going to be the actor's location, but offset somewhat. So we get actor location. And we're going to add some vectors to this. The first vector we're going to add is some height to it. Because we want the line trace to go down, so the sphere trace to go down towards the floor. So we need to start high. So I'm going to do plus vector. And I'm going to put in a value of the, in the Z of, uh, for now, let's do 500. And I'm going to plug that result into the start. However, that's not the end, because that's just going to go high just above the player character. I want it all to go a little bit forward, as if you're trying to find a ledge. So I need to add a bit of direction to this. Now we know how to get direction, so we're going to get the forward vector of the actor, which gives us our direction. And we're going to multiply that by a value. So I'm going to multiply this by vector, uh, float, sorry. And the float we're going to do is 75 units. I'm then going to add this vector onto our get actor location thing here. So go add pin and then drag this to the third pin there. And that gives us our starting position. The end position is going to be this position here minus a value in the Z because we're going to make it go straight down. So I'm going to take this position here minus a vector and we're going to do minus, uh, we're going to take away 500 in the Z. So do 500 and then we're going to push this into the end and change the radius to 10. And for testing purposes, let's change the draw debug type here for one frame. Hit compile, go back to your event graph and add your height trace to your tick event alongside your forward trace. After hitting compile, test your game and you should see two line traces or sphere traces happening. And it should look something like this. So when I walk up to platforms, you can see the two traces working together. So I've got a wall trace and I've got the sphere trace from the ceiling down hitting a ledge. So I now know where the wall is and where a ledge is. And when both of those are true and we can use those values, we can now get ourselves hanging from the ledge. So the values we're going to store are going to come from our various traces we've already made. So let's go into forward trace. And on out hit, I'm going to store two things. I'm going to right click and split out hit. And I'm going to store the hit uh, normal and the hit location. So out hit normal, we're going to drag out and promote to variable. And this is going to be the wall normal. And we're getting this because we're going to want to eventually rotate our player character to be flush against the wall. OK, so we need the wall normal for that because we can use that to work out the rotation that the player needs to be at. And we also need the location as well. So drag out, out hit location and promote that to a variable. Call it wall location. And we need this variable because we need to determine where the wall is so we can snap the player character to the wall when they're hanging. Hit compile and we're done with the forward trace. Next, we're going to go over to the height trace. Inside the height trace, we're going to take our return value and we're going to put that into a uh, branch because we only want to do the following if we actually found the ledge. Then I'm going to right click and hit, uh, right click on out hit here and change it to split. And we're going to use the out hit location here to work out where the player should be positioned and when to start entering climbing. So on out hit location, we're going to drag this out and break that. So we get access to the X, Y and the Z coordinates for that out hit location. Next, we need to get the location we want to compare it to. And for that, I'm going to use a socket. Now, currently, there is no socket on the character mesh that we need. So we need to add one to it. So let's find our mesh skeleton. So let's go find that. That'd be in, uh, where would that be? That'd be oh, in the mannequin folder. There we go. And onto the skeleton. And I'm going to find the pelvis, which is there. And right click and add a socket. And I'm going to leave it called as pelvis socket. Hit save. Go back to your player character. 
then right click in empty space and you want to get a socket location so get socket location and we choose the mesh because that's where the socket's located and the socket name is going to be called exactly as it was where we just saw it so pelvis socket and we're going to right click on return value and split that now we're splitting them because we just want the z-axis we only want to change the height so we're going to use these two values and work out the difference so we're going to drag from return value z on the socket and do minus bloat and choose the z-axis on the break vector as the second input we're then going to check whether or not this is within a certain range so let's drag this out and do in range float and the range we want to use for min and max a minimum is going to be minus 50 and the max is going to be uh, is going to be zero and that will go into a branch So basically what this is meaning is that we are only going to hang if the height difference between where we are um, uh, trying to climb up to is uh, just above the player character's head. Because the height of the character would mean that the pelvis and the height of here would be just about right. If it wasn't using the pelvis socket then we could detect a collision way too high for the player to even consider uh, climbing up. So we use that to determine whether or not we can actually climb up inside a certain uh, viable range of values. And that gets us that. Next, we need a new variable. So go to new variable list and add new variable and call it is climbing. And we're going to do a check on here to determine whether or not we're climbing. Because we don't want to uh, do the what we're about to do if we are already climbing so we're going to drag is climbing out and choose get and put that into a branch as well so to get us into hanging from the ledge we need to change the movement mode so drag your character movement component out and then from there set the movement mode to false and the new mode is going to be flying and we're using flying because it turns off gravity and just makes you hover in the air we're then going to take to stop all movement entirely so drag out from the character movement and do stop all movement or sorry stop movement immediately is the one you want and we'll plug that in and hit compile now if i go into my game and push play if i was to jump up to a ledge i'll just hang there like so we haven't got any animations tied to it but we are now hanging from our ledge now if i were to move we can move around uh, which is not what we want obviously so we need to turn that off so let's turn that off before we wrap this video up so go back into your player characters blueprint and we're going to set up a new custom event to test the hang so go to the event graph and we're going to do a custom event in here and we'll call this one hang and we're going to drag out is climbing variable and set it to true and that'll do for now we're going to do a lot more on that in the next video but come back to that next time what we're going to do now is go over to the movement inputs we've got move forward and move right and we're only going to make these work if the climbing is false so drag is climbing and drag out not okay and then put that into a branch so these will only move now if climbing is not true and I'm going to copy that and paste it up here like so so now let's test that out and see how we're looking so I walk up to a ledge and I jump up and I can oh I can still move that is because silly me I forgot to actually call the hang function at the end here so on the end of the height trace drag out your hang function and now it should stop you from moving around let's test that out 
There you go. I can no longer move around. So, and that will do us for this first part. In the next part, we're going to tie up the animations to it to make it look like it's actually hanging. And then we can start moving on how to actually take inputs from the character to either climb up or drop down from the ledge. If you want to watch that next part, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find that video plus many others where you can watch all my videos early before anyone else. Thank you so much for all the support all my patrons and YouTube subscribers, sorry, my YouTube members have uh, shown me. Thank you so, so much. It really is amazing. Uh, but that's all for me. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you do have any questions or comments or further suggestions, please leave a comment below. And if you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.